Hi, I'm Susanna Pollock, president of Games for Change. Let's talk a little bit about one of your newest projects. You, you guys basically have made an interactive documentary, right? Yeah, so we executive produced a VR documentary called On the Morning You Wake. Um, and it's an immersive piece, about 40 minutes long, that explores a situation that happened in Hawaii in 2018, where everyone who had a cell phone received a message saying that there was incoming ballistic missiles to the island. And it wasn't until 40 minutes later that they realized that it was a false alarm. So we go into Hawaii and help tell that story as a way to connect people around the issue of nuclear weapons threat and how real it is today as it was during the Cold War. Yeah, you know, that's that's kind of the scary thing, right? Um, yeah. As somebody who grew up kind of in the throes of the Cold War, you know, and uh, witnessed sort of the progress, the, the Berlin Wall falling and stuff like that, you know, you kind of grew up with that threat of nuclear war looming over you. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of, but then it seemed like it was going away almost, but this kind of, like, the, like that moment brought a lot of that back. Yeah, so it never went away. That's the sad part and the scary part, um, but it wasn't part of our, like, everyday consciousness because there's so many other critical issues that are affecting people today, like climate change and social justice. And we were approached by Princeton University's Center for Peace and Global Security, which is one of the, the biggest think tanks around uh, nuclear weapons threat. And they wanted to create some kind of interactive piece to help bring this issue you know, back to light so people can be thinking about it. And as an executive producer, we put together the uh, creative team, which includes Archer's Mark and Atlas V, who uh, had previously worked on an incredible a piece called Notes on Blindness. And they're the ones that constructed this just beautiful storytelling that puts a person right, you know, inside that experience and coupled with like geopolitical, you know, information that's also incredibly relevant it really helped bring this project to life. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Um, the VR medium seems very appropriate for trying to sort of put someone in somebody's shoes and develop empathy towards uh, towards any sort of scenario. Um, was this always going to be a uh, VR project? No, actually, we weren't sure what kind of interactive project it was going to be. We did explore games as a, you know, as a way to uh, tell the story or address this issue. And it wasn't until we identified the story, which was about the, the, the personal uh, experience in Hawaii, that we realized that an immersive medium would be the best way to really engage people into that experience because you can more, um, more I guess, effectively feel connected to those people and really um, under, and and really um, feel as if, honestly, you were there and having to live this experience with them. So it was very powerful medium. Yeah. What's, it, what's it been like for you seeing people go through the experience? You know, what, what are they like before they do it and what are they like after they do it? Well, as we just started showing the piece at South by Southwest uh, last week, was our, our first kind of premiere of the whole piece. I um, mean, it's going to be live on Oculus Quest on the 24th. Um, we really wanted to take special care to prepare people for going into the headset. For many people, it's the first time going into a headset, so there's that piece of it. But also to prepare them that it's going to be, you know, an emotional story. Um, and as we offboarded them, in a sense, we talked about uh, internally a lot about aftercare to give them an opportunity to decompress and even um, express themselves a little bit about the experience. So when we continue to show this in a physical environment, like a location-based experience, we have these um, exercises or activities that people can go through just to process and to give them really a few minutes to digest and, and kind of figure out how they feel about it and, and what action they might want to take. Nice, yeah, no, that's definitely appropriate. And you know, unfortunately, you know, the last few weeks the like nuclear war is starting to be a, a, a much more present threat than it's than it's felt like in a long time you know um, so I imagine that this is like I you know it, 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 the timing of your of your documentary like it, there's a there's a real parallel to that well what's crazy is that the project started five years ago that's when, in 2016, 17, it was when Princeton came to us, and it was before Trump was elected, President Trump was elected. Um, and then that happened, and we realized that the context of a nuclear threat might be changing over that you know, presidency. 
And as, as it comes with creative projects, this one took a long time to realize it had to be produced during a pandemic. And so by the time it's finally coming out to you know the public, we're in yet another you know context, right? In this case, a very immediate um, situation where it is a top of mind for people. Yeah, do you think like part of what you're trying to do with, is this all about creating empathy or awareness or both? Well, it is about creating awareness. And the empathy piece is really about having people look at this issue as a human and personal issue. It's not this existential, not solely an existential geopolitical you know, threat that feels very unwieldy, right? Like, what can I do about it? The fact that people in Hawaii went through this, that, you know, uh, Americans, everyday citizens went through this, makes it a very human issue. It's a human injustice. And that's what we wanted people to connect with. This could have happened to any one of us anywhere on this planet. And it's, and it's, it's, not, and it's not just. And so what we want people to do is to deeply connect with it so that they can feel like they can take action. Right. Whether it's, yeah. yeah, and so that's what we want. I remember when that happened. I remember seeing the footage of, yeah. like, parents putting their children into sewers and stuff like that. And, like, you just, like, you really, you really feel that, like, seeing that. You know, it was a very emotional moment just even witnessing from, you know, here in California. I can only imagine what that's like in VR at this point. Yeah, we do recreate that scene, absolutely. And um, the stories that we've been able to tell are personal accounts. So the production team went to Hawaii and uh, captured interviews from people who went through that experience with their parents or nurses or, um, you know, or, or, or people who work in the healthcare system. And then we actually cast uh, actors on a soundstage to do the recreations, but use the actual audio. So it's very immediate. Um, and uh, with the other piece that we did that I think is really um, makes it authentic is we also included a native Hawaiian perspective about people who, who are you know, native to the Hawaiian Islands and the fact that this issue of nuclear threat and the impact of nuclear is something that's existed in the Pacific Islands for years and years. So after the creative team went to Hawaii and captured interviews, audio interviews of people who lived this experience, we then, uh, on a sound stage, um, had actors do um, uh, to do a motion a capture of the experience. And so when you see the film, you do see recreations of this using the actual audio. Um, of the of the of the people who went through it. My next question is: Is this is just one of many projects that you're doing at Games for Change, right? Um, is this? I mean, what what's this process been like? Have you guys done a lot of sort of documentarian uh, virtual experiences or anything like that? No. So this is the first XR experience that we've executive produced. Um, we're not a studio, so we're not we're not creatively making the piece, but we do help put partnerships together and then run social impact campaigns, which we'll be doing for. For this piece, so this piece falls under our XR for Change umbrella, which has been part of uh, Games for Change for the past five years, and as part of our work in developing a community of creators, designers, social impact advocates, we. Um, effectively want to help realize amazing projects, whether we're directly involved with them ourselves, like we are with On the Morning You Wake, or we showcase their work at our Games for Change Festival, or at the, the our, our online arcades, or at our awards program that we won. We just want to help elevate this field and, and show that games and immersive media can really drive real world change. That's really incredible. It's really impressive that you guys sort of put this, like helped put this all together too, because that definitely, Definitely it's sounding like it's not, not something you, you do every day. Well, we're an organization that has been around for nearly 20 years. So we have grown alongside the games industry and the proliferation of games consumption. So in many ways, our community has grown alongside the games community. And we first started off as being a convener. So our Games for Change Festival, which, which happens in July each year in New York City, um, has grown to be really the hub of this activity with over a thousand people in person. And we have a virtual uh, a component of the event as, as well, which reaches a global audience. Um, and what we've seen is more and more interest, not only from the games industry, from AAA studios down to you know independent developers, but also from outside the industry, from the healthcare sector, the education sector, the civics, 
you know, community, realizing that games can really help them with realizing impact goals. And we're like one of the only places where all these communities can come together. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, and I feel, you know, if you look at the industry now, compared to where it was 20 years ago, like, where do you think progress has been made and where do you think, uh, what do you think we need to do next? Well, I do think that games have become more accessible to everyone. I think with the um, uh, with mobile phones and smartphones coming into the market, that in some ways have, in, in some ways, democratizes games access, right? That with with other uh, platforms for distribution, and it's it's turned everyone into a gamer, right? You've, you've got women, you've got grandparents, you've got you know all demographics around the world playing games, whether they're casual games, mobile games, or they're playing games in the classroom, or they're, you know, they're playing words with friends, with loved ones across the world. So we have now a, um, a culture that is, is comfortable with games, right, with playing games. And that has increased interest in how to use this medium for other non-entertainment purposes. So that's been really exciting. Um, in terms of where we can go from here, I do think that there's still a need to find more diverse voices within the game sector so we can tell more stories about people that are, re that, that re are represented ar around the world. Um, and I think that's something that we're seeing some uh, progress but there needs to be more more done in that space. Nice. Um, are there any are there any projects out there that in particular that you're a fan of right now? That I'm excited about right yeah. now. Um, well, one of our award winners from last year was um, Alba um, Adventure by um, Us Two, and I really like that example as a as a it was a game of uh, game of the year award because it demonstrates that you can have a commercial game. Right, I and mean, this is a studio that did Mon Monument Valley, but apply and infuse values that can have you know a positive impact, and still be a commercial profitable game. So games for change and impact games don't have to be within the non for profit sector only. They can have revenue attached to them, and I like that model in particular. Uh, similarly, you've got um, Ubisoft that has been creating educational versions of Assassin's Creed for several years now, and the fact that you can use a popular Again, again, commercial game that has some values in terms of education and, and the integrity of the worlds that they build in different time periods can lend themselves into educational context. I think that's really inspiring. Awesome. Well, uh, if people want to find out more about the documentary, where should they go? And then where can they go to find out more about Games for Change? Yes. So the documentary um, is going to be on the Quest 2 as of March 24th. Uh, Meta and Oculus VR for Good were partners on this project and were a huge help. And we're going to have an exclusive launch uh, for them. And it is for free uh, on the Quest 2 as of, um, as of the Thursday on the 24th. So that's where you can find that. And Games for Change can be found at, at gamesforchange.org and where you can find information about our festival and other programming that we have to offer.